grace to you and peace from God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. This is the second Sunday of Easter. Typically, on this day each year, we turn to the story of the resurrected Christ and the encounter of that resurrected Christ with Thomas. So listen to the Word of God as it comes to us from the 20th chapter of John's Gospel. But Thomas, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other, dis other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. The word of God, the word of life. Let us pray. Gracious God, we do give thanks for your word which comes to us this day, a word of life. We pray that that word speak to us in these times. In your son's name we ask it. Amen. We want to make sure we don't miss it, whatever it is. Maybe it is a phone call from our son telling us that the grandchild has been born. Maybe it's a call from our daughter letting us know how the interview went, but whatever it is, we, we don't want to miss it. So we carry our phone upstairs, downstairs, we check it to make sure that, that we didn't forget uh, and leave it on, on mute. We check it to make sure a message hasn't come through. We don't want to miss it. Maybe the it we don't want to miss is a news story. Uh, we've worked hard on a habitat build. There is a story about its dedication. We don't want to miss it. We have worked heart and soul and given everything of, of our time and resources to a shelter. We don't want to miss that story about it and the difference it can make in the lives of those in, in our uh, community. Part of today's story as it relates to Thomas is about Thomas missing an encounter with Jesus and, and what that meant to Thomas and, and maybe what it reveals about us. So let's consider this for, for just a moment. And part of that, of course, is, is understanding just something about that first Easter. In the church, our Easter celebrations are orchestrated, they're, they're synchronized from the lilies to the processional to the Easter egg hunt to the music to the sermon, everything is lined up and in order. That first Easter Sunday was chaotic. It was a roller coaster of emotions. Into that we bring the group of disciples and those surrounding Jesus as we reflect on this, this story. It was early the first day of the week. Mary went out to the tomb. John tells us that Jesus went, or Mary went out to the tomb by herself. When she got there, she saw that the stone had been rolled away. So she ran and told Peter and the disciple that Jesus loved. She said to them that the tomb was empty. They had taken him and she did not know what they did with him. We don't know who they was, who they were supposed to be. Uh, we don't know uh, where Mary thought they might have taken the body, but all that she knew was that Jesus was not where Jesus was supposed to be. So Peter and that beloved disciple ran to the tomb and entered that tomb. They saw the grave claws, but they also could not find Jesus. 
John tells us that they went back to the place that they were staying. I can't believe that they went back to the place that they were staying and took a nap or just closed themselves in. I have to believe that either they were staying with the disciples or on their way back to wherever they were living, that they didn't stop and tell the disciples what they had seen. Maybe it was for the reason that they were amazed, bewildered. Do you think? Could it be possible? Is there a chance? Maybe they went and told uh, the disciples what they saw or, or didn't see to warn them. The relig religious leaders, Rome, will be looking for us. When they find out that Jesus' body is missing, we will be the first ones that they come to and ask questions about this. I can't believe that Peter and that disciple didn't have a conversation with the others. Some time in the midst of all that, Mary then arrived and told the group that she had actually seen the Lord. She had not seen Jesus' body, but she had seen the risen Lord. She'd had a conversation with the Lord. I can imagine that, that those disciples went after Peter and the beloved disciple. Did you not see Jesus? Did you even look for him? Did you see the gardener? That evening, after I expect a whole lot of conversation, a whole lot of uh, maybe some accusations being thrown around, Jesus appeared in their midst. The midst of those disciples who were behind a locked door for fear of the Jews. Peace be with you, Jesus said. I think it's, it's important for us to, to get the picture of this in our own minds. Jesus appeared in the midst among that community to speak those words, peace be with you. As if to say, wherever the community is gathered, with the risen Christ in its midst, there can be peace. I think that's a lesson for all of us in the living of these days, that wherever the community gathers, the risen Christ is in its midst. And there indeed can be peace. Peace be with you. Thomas, for some reason, was not there with the disciples in that moment. And, and through time and, and the years, many people have tried to figure out maybe what Thomas was doing. Might have been something simple like Thomas was out looking for food for the group. Might have been something like Thomas drew the short straw and he was the one sent out to see if the Jewish elite, whether the Roman soldiers were coming after them, had word of Jesus' disappearance gotten out. Maybe Thomas just needed some time to grieve, and grieving for Thomas meant being alone. It didn't mean being with the whole group of others. But for whatever reason, Thomas was not there. When he did join the group, they told him, they being the disciples, that they had seen the Lord. And Thomas said, simply, unless unless, unless I, I see the marks in his hands, unless I touch his side, as I put my hand in his side, I will not believe. I expect there were a lot of different emotions going through Thomas's heart at that time. Maybe some of it was doubt. Maybe some of it was hurt. But I have to believe that in that mix of emotions, there was also this longing, this aching to see Jesus. After all, he really wasn't asking for anything more than the other disciples had seen the marks in Jesus' hand and his side. I believe that Thomas just simply wanted to understand the connection between Jesus who was crucified and the risen Lord. What would a relationship look like with the risen Lord? How can I be near to this one who has conquered death? What does that mean for my relationship with Jesus? 
I expect that there was a simple longing, a simple ache to be near to Jesus in however Jesus might appear to, to him. That's kind of the person Thomas was. Thomas was, was open to, to seeing Jesus in different ways. Thomas was open to, to being told that he needed to see things differently. He needed to see life differently. He needed to see Jesus differently. But he did need some direction. He did need some help. If we go back to the 14th chapter of the Gospel of John, we find Jesus saying goodbye to his disciples. And Jesus said those famous words, In my Father's house there are many rooms. I go and prepare, go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come and take you to myself. You know where I am going. You know the way. Thomas, Thomas was the one that spoke up and said, We don't know the way. We don't know where you are going. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. I don't think Thomas had a problem with what Jesus said, except for the fact that Thomas just wanted to understand what was ahead. What would the relationship look like? How could they be near to the one that they had loved and, and followed and served in in a new life with a new understanding. The same was true here as Thomas yearned and, and longed for that relationship to be had with, with Jesus. It was one thing to follow a flesh and blood Jesus. It was quite another to figure out what it would be like to serve a risen Lord. Unless I see, I believe we can feel the longing in Thomas's heart. Jesus did not disappoint Thomas. Jesus appeared and spoke to Thomas personally. Look, see, touch. Thomas, Thomas got what he longed for. I believe that is good news for us this Easter season. I believe that, that sometimes God acts, God works, God loves in ways that, that we don't typically understand. And I think that if we ask God to help us see to help us understand, to help us know, to answer that longing inside of us for, for Christ to be near, that God will show God's self and answer our pleas, answer our, our prayers. Matt Skinner is a professor at uh, Luther Seminary, and he said that Easter, the Easter celebration, is not about nostalgia, nor about boosting the morale and spirits of the church. Easter, at its heart, is about an affirmation that we can live into a future fraught with peril in the confidence that a God whose ways are not typically seen will indeed still be acting and make God's self known to us if we are open to that. So maybe... We ought to offer the longing of our hearts these days. The longing to see God, to know God in these atypical days. So that we might be open to how God might reveal God's self. As our resurrected Lord, as our hope, as our light, as the promise that is before us. The Lord is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. May God answer the longing of our hearts to know exactly what that might mean for us. And may we give God all thanks and honor and praise. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.